Let's continue with chapter three of the AVR microcontroller and embedded systems using assembly and C. We're going to be talking about calling, calling functions. And in order to do that, we need to talk a little bit about the stack. All right, so we're going to talk about the stack, pushing and popping with respect to the stack. And then we're going to get into an example where we call a function in assembler. All right, the stack is a temporary source of information. It's where we put information that we want to have access to later, and we pull that information as well from the stack as needed. So it's a temporary location for information. The two major operations that are used with the stack are pushing and popping. Pushing means placing information onto the stack. Popping means removing information from the stack. When we push, we are first taking the contents of a, of a register and placing it in a location pointed to by the stack pointer. That's the step one. And after we decrement the value on the stack pointer. Now, uh, the decrementing and incrementing of the stack pointer is very specific to particular chips and architectures. So in one case for one particular chip, it might be a a decrement that goes with the push and in another architecture it might be an increment that goes with the push. In this particular case we're going to say that the stack is decremented when we push. Popping information or removing information from the stack means that first we increment the value of the stack pointer so we point to a new location that's more positive uh, in the stack itself and then we take the contents pointed to by that stack pointer so the contents on the stack and we make a copy of it and place it on the uh, in the register that we're interested in putting it onto. So in all cases we are only making copies, copies from a register into the stack, that's a push, or a copy from the stack into a register. The information is never erased directly, it's copied, uh, but because the stack pointer moves it's sort of like you're erasing it uh, after you pop it off the stack. The stack itself uh, has addresses that are associated with it via the stack pointer. The stack pointer or SP is 16 bits wide. There is a high byte called SPH and a low byte called SPL. All right, let's look at, at the mechanics of this here. What we have is a program written in assembler. The addresses for each one of the operations is listed on the left. And we're going to start with a load immediate. Okay, and what we're going to do here is we're going to load the value for where the stack pointer should point to um, using two load immediates and outs. So we'll do that first. Okay, and so what we do is we, we load up two individual bytes into the SPH and SPL um, elements of the stack pointer. Okay, and what that ends up doing is moving the stack pointer. Uh, effectively to, to point to the actual location of the beginning of the stack. And that's what we've done right here. Once that's set up, so once the stack is set up like this, now we can perform operations where we're moving information uh, to and from the stack. So this is where we, we do the uh, on line four or address four, the load immediate. So we're going to take uh, the, the value of 10 and place it in register R20. You can see that happening right there. Then we're going to put 20 uh, in hexadecimal into register R21. And then we're going to take the value 30 and put that into R22. So now what we have is uh, three values that are copied into three different registers. From here, we're going to take those values and we're going to place them, copies of them, onto the stack. So we're going to push the value that's found in R20, and we're going to put it on the stack. Here we go. Push R20. So now 10, which is the contents of R20, is now on the first location of the stack. And once we've done that, we then move the stack pointer, or we change the value inside of the stack pointer to, play, to place its pointing to uh, another location in the stack. So now we're ready to take the contents of R21 and place it on the stack to push it, a copy of it, onto the stack. So we're going to put the contents of R21 onto 
the next location in the stack. And we're not going to erase that first value that we put into the stack. So now the value hexadecimal 20 is placed in the second location on the stack. And now the stack pointer is pointing to the third location on the stack. We're now going to push the value that's found in R22 onto the stack. So the value 30 has now been copied and placed on the stack, and now the stack pointer is pointing to its fourth location. But we're now going to remove information from the stack. So the 30, 20, and 10 values are there basically temporarily. Okay, we're going to want to use them now. And so we're going to pop that first, that's actually not the first, the last value that was placed on the stack, the 30, we're now going to place it in register R21. So we have to decrement the stack pointer, and then we take the value after it's been decremented, and we place it into R21. Now we're going to pop the next value on the stack, that is the 20 in hexadecimal, and we're going to place it in R0, register 0. So we have to decrement the stack pointer, and then we look at the value that's pointed to at this newly decremented uh, location, and we're going to place it in R0. So 20 will end up in R0. Finally, we want to pop another value off of the stack, in this case hexadecimal 10. We want to take that value and we want to copy it and place it into register R20. So we have to decrement the stack pointer, and then we copy the value out of that location into register R20. Now, let's talk about calling a function. Calling a function is similar to what we would do when we jump from one location to another or branch from one location to another in uh, Assembler. However, there's an extra component that's super important here, and that is that we store the address of the next instruction after the function call within the stack. So uh, that way the program counter PC can keep track of where we're supposed to be after the function is done being called. So here we have a program written in assembler. The stack has already been loaded up so we know where the stack is supposed to be uh, located. The stack pointer is pointing to the right location. And now we're going in uh, address memory 4, we're going to do a load immediate where we're going to put 15 into R20, then we're going to put 5 into register R21, and then we're going to call a function called func underscore name. So load immediate, load immediate, and now we're going to call the function. Now, the function itself is basically just a label, and we can see that label at address location 000A. We've defined it. And at that location is an add operation, then uh, a, a subtract immediate, and then there's an, a ret, a return at address 000c. That ret or return means that we want to return back to uh, where the function was called, but actually the, the line right afterwards to line 0008. Okay, that's what the return is supposed to make us uh, do. But in order to do that, it needs to know where to return to. That information is going to be stored on the stack itself. Okay, so here we go. So we're going to call the function name. When we do that, we store the address of the next location in the stack. So 0008 gets stored on the stack at the location pointed to by the stack pointer. So 8 and 0 are placed on the stack and the stack pointer moves out of the way so that it can uh, then store other information and at the same time the program counter then jumps or it, it changes values in order to say I am now going to be at the location of the function in this case not 0008 but in, instead 000A. A is an alpha okay which is where the add R20, R21 is. Does that, and then we do the subtract immediate, which is at 000B, and then we're going to do the return. 
which is located at 000C. Now, when the return command happens, then the chip itself will then say, hey, this is a return. I want to go back to uh, where I'm supposed to go. I need to pull that value off the stack and it will do that. It will pop the values off of the stack. You don't have to say it out loud or expressly. It does it automatically and it will move the program. Well, it'll, it'll go to where the program counter is pointing to, which is 0008. And then it continues in its uh, operation. In this case, it goes to 0009, which is basically a jump back to 009. So it's basically an infinite loop at that particular location. Mm -hmm.